So for Vanet, they talked about several technologies. One is called DSRC, Dedicated Short Range Communication, also known as 11P and 1609.1. To four, sixteen over nine point one, two, three, and four, and uh, this can be used up to one kilometer at two hundred kilometer per hour. So two hundred kilometer per hour um, is the maximum speed that they have designed it for, and the distance is one kilometer. Then Ymax was being discussed as one possibility. You can put a Ymax tower, and everybody can, you know, for miles, people cars can talk to it. Now the actually Ymax has become LTE, so I should change it to LTE. Same thing, you know, if you had an LTE enabled car, it could talk to the tower for B2I. 3G could do the same thing. Uh, and um, with handoff, you could be continuously connected. Satellites can do, but the satellites are, while they are available everywhere, but um, their delays are kind of large and the cost is high. And so they are only used in areas where there is no other possibility, like Middle East. <laughs> um, basically, um, if you are in the middle of nowhere, uh, of course, there is no tower, nothing, then satellites are always there. Right? So the satellite phone is there, for example. I don't know how many of you have used satellite phones, but they are available. And they are used only when you are in the sea or something like that where there is no tower. And uh, same thing for here, for technology, for Bennett. So anyway, we are going to concentrate on DSRC, which is 11P. So DSRC spectrum is from 5.8 to 5.9 gigahertz. Okay, so this is very close to that other 5.8 spectrum we had, but it is different. So you cannot use your 11, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, S devices in this one. It is um, 850 to 925. You can see there is a 75 megahertz. You take the last two digits. So seven 10 megahertz channels out of those 75 you can make. Now, these channels are numbered like this. 172. 173, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 to 180. Now the channels are 5 megahertz. Numbering is by 5 megahertz, but usage here is by 10 megahertz, and therefore only 172, 174, only even number channels are being used, right? Because when you use 172, you are probably using 172, 173, right? 10 megahertz. Anyway, so 7, 10 megahertz channels are used. Channel 178 is used as the control channel, okay, and it will become clear as to what is controlled for. And the 174, 176, 80, and 82, 74, 76, 80, and 82, they are used as service channels. Channel 184 is reserved for future. So this is not even used right now. High availability, low latency. So there is this thing where very quickly you want to get something through very high priority, so that is for that. And channel 172 is not used. So anyway, basically out of seven, only five are used. One is a control channel and four are service channels. So we different EIRP for four classes. So there are four classes of service and different power limits. Okay, now these power limits are set by FCC. OBU, can transmit 33 dBm, RSU can transmit 43 dBm and 33 dBm if it is somebody else. So the government can transmit 43, other people have to limit to 33. First of all, OBU. OBU, if you remember what is OBU? Onboard unit means the car. The car can transmit at what is what power? 33 dBm. Right, and this is EIRP. So we measure it in the direction. If you have an antenna of 10 dBm, then you can transmit 23. Plus 10 added to that will become 33. RSU is the roadside unit. And if it is owned by the government, it is 43 dBm. If it is owned by somebody else, 33. Now the protocol itself 
has many components. There are two planes to begin with. There is management plane and the data plane. The management plane includes security and the management. The data plane includes the, basically does the data transfer. So data plane is done by IEEE mostly. So in the data plane, IEEE did the file layer uh, 802.11p and the MAC layer 1609.3 and 4. The logical link layer is a standard for all 802 protocols, which is 802.2. And then there is, on the, on the top of this, you need network layer. So there are two possibilities. Either you can take IPv6 and TCP UDP, or you can go through this something called WSMP, Wave Short Message Protocol, which is done by ASTM. <laughs> ASTM is um, Testing Material Society, Association of something. Testing material, TM is for testing material. So totally non-computers people. So they come up with this, um, they probably needed this um, this kind of protocol for whatever application. So they came up with this WSMP first. And so then it goes, the rest of it goes over this stack like this. And most of us will go through this. And where UDP and TCP are there, but TCP is not advised. So they just want to do UDP because TCP has a problem that you need the acknowledgement and it may never happen. On the management plane side, there is a management for 802.11p, which is designed by IEEE. So it is called physical layer management entity for 11p. Then there is a MAC layer management entity, which is for 11 and for 1609 extension for that. So there are two different committees working at the same time on this and coordinating. And then 1609 people have also come up with the rest of the management part here. And then they have a security part. So if you were to implement any of this, you will have to read a lot of standards. And some of these will be covered in this class. And some of these will be may not. But um, basically, you can see that how, you know, how complex, complex it is. There is 11, 1609 and in different pieces that are intermeshed. As long as they're all IEEE, they all work out okay. And, um, and then sometimes it goes out of IEEE, like here, ASTM. So we, even I wonder how the coordination between 1609 and 11 works, because these are very different. I have been to 11 meetings, 802 meetings, but not to 1609 meetings, although I'm on both, both the lists. But 1609 meets separately. I mean, they, they don't meet at the same place as the 802 meets. So I don't know how they coordinate. But I mean, of course, they can always coordinate by by sending people to both the meetings. But anyway, um, so let's go slowly, piece by piece. So first thing is wave wireless access per vehicle. And we saw the word for DSRC and wave right here. Um, then WSMP, we saw WSMP, which is um, ASTM standard. What it does is it indicates what is the priority, what is the data rate and power, how far should it go. And it was developed by American Society for Testing and Materials. Okay. The wave management entity is 1609. And then wave security is 1609. So that 1609 security does in data encryption and key management. Management does the registration, data rate, and power for different applications. So this whole thing is wave. This is the file layer of wave. This is MAC layer of wave. This whole thing is wave. So let's talk about the file layer. I think we'll stop here. Next time we'll talk about the file layer. And as you can see, this is going to be OFDM. So we will talk about how this is done and then you can see what are the differences from the other standards.